I can't say you're presenting and you, you know, to use colloquial terms, you bag on, you, um, you, you, you know, move use on. the past tense instead thing. of the present tense. <laughs> you have, you have and to like, move on. Like, what are people going to say? You have to move on because if you try to dwell on it, you would, it would go worse than expected. <laughs> Personally, I feel like if that happens, and the reason I don't just move on is because for me, I take my listeners very seriously and I think that they're my friends more than just my listeners. So I feel like if I'm having a conversation with my friend and I make a mistake, I can easily tell them, oh, sorry, I didn't mean that and I meant this and then just keep it moving well, because if i keep doing oh um, 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 and trying to cover it up then i just look stupid sure. and it's like i'm disrespecting them and then it's just it's horrible. so you're allowed to be human yeah, yeah sure of Very course i mean so. we're humans of course so we're allowed to be human now let's look at the platform the future awards africa yeah how important is this platform for young people and indeed nigeria and africa it's very important. I mean, if, like I said earlier, it feels like a pat on your back. And to think that the younger generation isn't always recognized. I mean, every time you see awards, you see them awarding people that have been there for so long. With all mm -hmm. due respect, I mean, it's good to recognize them and to encourage them as well. But the younger ones that are just coming up need to know that, oh, are they doing the right things? Um, should they continue or is it not for them? So I feel like this kind of platform just gives us the recognition that we need. I'm, I mean, the Future Award is doing so much. When they call me, you're going on channels, TV or Sony, I'm like, ah, you people are not even joking, you know? <laughs> they're not playing. <laughs> exactly. 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 So it's just a very huge platform. I mean, worldwide recognized. I think it's good. Thank you very much, by the way. I'd like to say thank you to the Future Awards Africa for this platform. It's everything we need. Yeah, just in addition, the fact that the Future Awards does so much, it just, it just pushes you beyond. So basically, the Future Awards, how I see it, it sees that you're doing something good, recognizes that, and tells people that, oh, look at this person, they're doing something good, and then gives you an opportunity to get more attention to what you're doing. And basically, I think that is really important to young people because there's so many young people looking for platforms to just push. I'm one of them, and I'm grateful, and I'm not going to waste this opportunity. I'm going to use it to the best of my ability. But that, um, at the end of the day, it's so important that we also, the fact that the Future Awards is really African central, it's very important that we tell our stories and push our own narrative and push out the people that we think, yes, at this moment, these are the people that are doing this and they're doing it exceptionally well and so some yeah. will say with the media and we're all women here that there's a lot of competition there's a lot of backbiting i mean do you feel under pressure that you must win and how do you handle like the other nominees do you feel yourself being compared in terms of not even just the job but looks and how many people are following me on social media I mean, it's not, it's not always about that. Some people feel pressured and feel like, oh, it's a competition. We're not, we not racing anywhere. Not I mean, this space is big enough for everybody. If it wasn't big enough, someone like me who started in my year two won't be here at age 23 competing with people in their 30s. I mean, it's not a competition. To be honest, I see it as there's always something to learn from the person close to you. Even um, Olive is also a nominee in this same category. We're still chatting days ago and we're like, ah, this thing, have you sent your essay, this and that it's no competition at all the minute we start seeing each other as sisters brothers and helpers there won't be any competition to be honest i feel like um apart from just the fact that oh we're, we're all loving each other like you said there's no industry that doesn't have competition and just being completely honest winning this award would be great however being nominated is is very great it's a great deal and the fact that i'm nominated with so many talented people of course we expect one person to win. Of course we expect, <laughs> we, expect, we expect whoever else that doesn't win to, know, to you know, feel like, okay, well, this person won. Good luck to them. You never know why that person won over you. It does not mean that, oh, yeah, okay, you're well, so bad yeah. and they're so good. It could, it could just be a little thing. Like she said, we have to write essays. We have to fill questionnaires. Like all of that stuff. You never really know. Maybe someone just had a better essay. Maybe someone just did. Yeah, I mean, it's just... It's just and what the is. media, what, what role do you see the media playing, especially with um, galvanizing young people to take a more active role in the future of their lives? The media plays a very big role. I mean, media is everything you see. Mm -hmm. We're on your screens, passing messages across. And I feel like it puts us under pressure in a way to be the better version of ourselves. I mean, people look up to us, aside from listening to us speak on TV every day, aside from listening to us speak on radio they look into our personalities as well yeah. and so that 
goes a long way to say that we should be doing so many things right aside from coming to work or interviewing people on the red carpet and going back home people are studying you they feel like they know you they mm. feel like they're in your lives and so it just pushes me as an individual to do more it pushes me because brands are looking at me as well what's this girl doing behind the scenes and stuff like that so it pushes me to be a better person to help the society in every little way i can um, for me it's 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 more like being on the radio sometimes you can't quantify how much of an impact you're having and sometimes you don't know how much of reach you have but one time i know someone told me a story and they were like oh you know i was in a bus and the bus conductor kept telling the driver oh fisi awazi and all that <laughs> stuff and literally i'm not even your bus so i didn't understand but i just i felt i, I was I was wowed, I was stunned. And to see that in a couple of minutes, the entire bus was like up in a conversation that I started. And this was something I just started on the radio, just casually, it just made me know that more than anything, it is my responsibility to push out good into okay. the society. And I always do that. I always push out for feminism. I always push out for body um, confidence. I always, always push those messages. And me. I want to take you back to something you said in an interview that had to do with being body conscious. And you said you started getting um, very conscious about your complexion, about your size. Yeah. Um, how have you been able to use the media positively to also encourage people that might be going through that stage when they're teenagers and not really comfortable in their own skin? Okay, well, growing up, I, I really have to give credit to my parents because they were fantastic they really protected me from a lot my parents always and my family they always just kept telling me oh you're very cute and they kept telling me I was fine positive you know it was just it was just positive reinforcement they just kept telling me so I felt really good up until I became a teenager and I went to boarding school and um, well there was a lot of things that would happen and that was when I first started you know having an experience with things like colorism I mean they would always pick the light-skinned girl to be you know miss this and that oh no no you are too black we're looking for people that are very catchy and when I grew up because of the fact that that really did affect me and growing up has been a constant battle up until today every single day I look in the mirror I have to tell myself oh you know I have to tell myself I'm beautiful and I have to tell myself that I am really enough and whatever it is, I am up to the standard because I've put in a lot of work. Now, this goes just beyond physical appearance. I know people are just like, oh, well, get over it. You're just dark skin and whatever. It's deeper than that because there's a lot of opportunities that, like I, I just made reference to from secondary school, have been, you know, taken over my head just because of the color of my skin. And then so many people have bleached their skin. So many people are literally destroying the melanin that I call a superpower because it's literally protecting you from um, direct sun rays and that's why a lot of you know dark skin people don't have so much skin cancer issues but then so many people are trying to bleach their skin so what I've done is on the radio I even started a thing uh, a show element called melanin popping and I would literally always tell people how to take care of their natural hair how to just take care of your dark skin and appreciate it and then I've written articles as well in um, newspapers and online plus um, in, the few, in the next few coming weeks I have like a, a line of t-shirts coming out and they're basically centered on consent and body confidence and all of those things that I've put on those t-shirts are things that I've told myself or I've had to tell my friends or my baby sister because I do have a baby sister and almost everything I do I really want her to benefit from it I have siblings you know so um, things I've told myself things I've told my friends basically about consent and body confidence, you know, telling yourself you're magic, you're a spice, you're beautiful, those kind of things. These t-shirts will come out okay. and they will be up. We only have about two more minutes. So Tomike, very quickly, have you also had that issue of being dark skinned or the pressure to bleach or to be brighter for the camera? Uh, actually, no. I mean, right from time I got into this, I said to myself, no one would tell me that I am not good enough because I'm the best version I can be of myself. And I see that People are beginning to encourage dark skinned ladies today and I, I think that's because of the awareness we have created Same. as well and everybody has created that dark skinned women are beautiful. Back then I would go for auditions and they would say, ah, this light skinned girl, yes, come. No, 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 we don't want dark girls. But now we even see auditions for dark skinned ladies. So I yeah, I mean, I've had times when they'll say you're too light. So <laughs> Really? <laughs> yes, and they well, go for the dark should. skin. I, I think you're privileged to a large extent. So you really, yes, because you're, so, you're so light skin. I, I feel exactly in your position as well. But just before we um, close the show very quickly, what message do you have for people out there who want to go into TV, into radio, and one day be nominated? Um, I will say that 
you put your best foot forward it can be easy initially i mean i started off as a volunteer for several years no one was paying me but i was doing it i would wake up every morning even when i was ill i would still go to work because i enjoyed it not because i was making money from it so when money started coming i'm like ah this thing is not bad you know <laughs> so go into it because you love it not because you're doing it for the money and also know that times will come when it won't be so easy but you just have to keep pushing i mean just take a look at this girl for example Tommy <laughs> Cat Lion, they nominated 23 years old and i'm here today so trust me you can do it and age is only but a number and for me, i would say if you are interested in something for example you're interested in radio or tv you have access now more than ever to a wide range of information exactly. always listen to the people or watch the people you aspire to be like research research for little tips and tricks learn there's not there's not a time that someone will tell you you're too skilled if they say you're too skilled well you can tell them that i would <laughs> offer you. you as much skill just keep pushing and acquire as much skill as you can and take every single opportunity you can thank network you. up thank you thank you awazi thank you. and thank you to mike alayonde and you. all the best with your nominations thank you and that's where we'll be wrapping up this episode of the show but you can keep the conversation going online hashtag robbing minds follow at wineijatv and tv.wineijat.com i'm isabella akinshe good afternoon